this story starts in Brisbane, which is fitting because that's where we are today. And I'm sitting in a hospital, not too far from here, and I stink. I haven't eaten in days. I'm 22, and I'm in the final year of my PhD with my whole life in front of me. I'm sitting in this hospital because I've tried to kill myself again. This is not a new moment. This is completely familiar. And I can see the next part playing out as though I've already rehearsed it. Somebody who doesn't know me is going to come in and ask me a barrage of questions that hurt. I won't feel them because I've already let myself get used to this. I'll answer dramatically or truthfully or rudely. It'll depend on how I feel at the time. And then they'll whisk me away somewhere locked and cold and they'll expect me to heal and I won't. After enough time has passed, they will let me go. I can remember being little. I was maybe 10 or 11, and I'd be lying in bed, wanting desperately to go to sleep. And all I could do was think about the idea that I'd be dead soon. I'd become gripped hour after hour with these nightmares and flashbacks. Uh, even now, I don't really have words to explain what it was I thought about. But my body would sort of freeze, and I'd become locked in my memories. I'd distract myself by reading. A mind you cannot control can be a terrifying thing. And because of the way that trauma scars us in both physical and emotional ways, my body could not be controlled either, and I would relive things that had happened to me over and over again. Eventually, I'd sort of detach and float up towards the ceiling, and I'd, I'd watch myself from above, um, kind of experiencing the world, and I'd be shaking and like, writhing around in bed and crying. It was awful, and I was numb. For every low, there was a high. And for every time of unwellness, there was wellness. This was how I made sense of my life. I was a person who was sometimes sick and sometimes well. I figured this is my lot. I'm, I'm going to get used to this. Things have improved. A few weeks ago, I was showering before work, and something familiar happened. This echo I hear in my head made a sudden reappearance. My skin felt like it was kind of crawling on top of my bones. The echo is difficult to explain. But it feels like I'm standing outside of my body, listening to the inside of my skull. My thoughts become physical, and they kind of bounce against, against the membrane. Everything's really painfully loud, and I can hear nothing else. I'd, I'd barely slept the night before. I was gripped by those same nightmares and flashbacks, and I was waking in these pools of sweat, and I'm gritting my teeth, and I'm wailing. Sorry, I just need a moment. Gritting my teeth and wailing. Gritting my teeth and wailing. Whew, I didn't realize it was going to be like this to say it. Um, it sounds like it's happening in your head. And I know it's all in my head, but what's happening to my body is different. It's, it's, it's a physical thing. Trauma is physical. It is both real and unreal all at once, and standing in that shower, I'm in a million pieces, and none of it makes sense. 
In my last few years of high school, these experiences, they were all consuming. I was getting lots of help, and nothing was really working. I was seeing a therapist, and he was, he was great. He suggested that I should read some Harry Potter. And in a sleepless night, I did. Somewhere near the end of J.K. Rowling's Goblet of Fire, Harry is lying on the ground. He is traumatized from a battle. He's five books in to his onslaught, and he has endured so much. Trauma upon trauma keeps coming at him, and yet he finds himself back in the same place, never learning to change tact or change course. He needs help, desperately. And more than that, he needs somebody to go in and fight his battles for him. Or so you think. And McGonagall runs to his side to aid him. The wise principal stops her and bellows, leave him, leave him be. He says, understanding is the first step to acceptance. And only with acceptance can there be recovery. Now, Dumbledore's lesson was not just for Harry Potter. And I'm going to focus on these three phases today of understanding, acceptance, and recovery, and how you can embody them to have real impact on living with trauma and recovery. So, the understanding. When we experience setbacks, many of us respond with a default impulse to pick ourselves up and push on through. We man up, dust off. Bounce back because being sick is wallowing, because there's no lesson to be learned beyond getting better and being well. That's what we've been taught. And we also know that we'll often find ourselves back in the same place that we're in before if we don't get to the root cause of the issue. Trauma is different because it isn't a setback. And there's no way you can rationalize trauma. And we shouldn't hope to live in a world where you can rationalize trauma. We're often told that we're in control of our actions and reactions, and, and some of that's helpful rhetoric for, for knowing ourselves. But there are also things that happen to us and are done to us that are out of our control, and that includes our reactions to them. There is a duality to trauma, the experience of it and the reliving of it in our everyday lives. The imprint registers and locks in, and it plays great. When I was showering before work a few weeks ago, I knew that I had to understand what was happening in order to move forward. I had to touch the tiles to know where I was in the physical space. I had to hum a little in my head to displace the echo. I had to recall the night before, and the sweats, and the flashbacks, and that part is hard, and it hurts. Keep going. I told myself, you're going to get used to this. You are not responsible for that act of violence. Keep going, keep going. You're going to be okay. Keep going, keep going. You're going to get through this. Turn the shower off. I understood what was happening. We are, in the end, products of how we live through our stories, both told and retold. And that experience that I was describing as a kid, where I'm floating above myself, is no different to being an adult in a shower a few weeks ago. These experiences, they're shared and they're common among many of us. They sound academic. They sound intellectual, like they're happening in the head. They, they happen in the body. They're physical. Trauma is physical. Dumbledore's first phase of understanding has two prongs. Understanding the physical experience of what is happening here and now, and understanding the preceding events that led us to that space that we were in. It sounds straightforward. So that when we experience anything, setbacks, instead of pushing ourselves up and, and dusting off, manning up, we begin with understanding what is happening and what has happened, so that we might move on to the next phase, the acceptance. So Harry's lying on the ground, 
and he doesn't get to have some sort of cerebral experience where he gains insight into his past and it unlocks his vast potential. And nor do we. He is on a journey, and Harry's journey is a physical one. For Harry, that was about understanding his past trauma and how that trauma is integrating with who he's becoming now, and that's not an easy thing to do. Acceptance is not about forgiveness. And it isn't a state of amnesty or wiping the slate clean, because we aren't in the business of sweeping things under the carpet. Harry didn't deserve what happened to him. Trauma's not a given. For me, acceptance didn't happen in a moment. And sometimes I, I think it's still happening. But it was about saying, I'm not responsible for what they did to me. And I'm not responsible for what has happened to my body. And I'm not in control of all of these responses. But I am the keeper and owner of this body, and I'm not giving in or letting myself be defeated. I accept what I understand, that trauma has happened, and that it continues to wreak havoc. And my responses are going to be mine again soon. And like Harry, I, I kept finding myself back in the same place in hospitals, void of options for moving forward. Because acceptance is a thing you can only do for yourself, no one else can do it for you. In order to move through, I had to learn to tell a new story about myself. It is not your responsibility to seek justice or fight or be angry. No one has the right to determine how you embark on this journey. Recovery. <laughs> Recovery from trauma is personal, and it never needs to be complete. You aren't broken. You aren't broken, and because you're not broken, you don't need to be fixed. And Harry's lying on the ground. He needs to understand what has happened, accept it, and then he moves through. And the same is true for all of us. The more we learn about ourselves and the way we interact with trauma, the more likely we are to be better at dealing with whatever comes next. Hmm. We contextualize events and re-remember the way we were with a new view. Recovery is a bit like that in that it is an opportunity to continue reassembling ourselves in relation to the things that have happened and our reactions to them. Learning to be okay with the way that we've become because of what has happened and because of what we've done is a really complicated thing. It's the stuff of a life lived. For me, there's no overcoming. Just how I've learned to hold the story in my body. The story's not finished yet. Trauma is not a universal experience, but each of us have a role to play in supporting recovery. Today I've told you a version of my story, in the hope that when someone tells you their own, you are there to listen and hear them. I didn't tell you gory details or sensationalize the things that have happened to me. And I did that on purpose. You didn't ask. And I'm the keeper of this story, so it's my choice how it gets told now. Not all of us know what to do when someone reaches out. And if you don't know, don't worry. Just know that when someone's asking you, they're trying. Listen, and resist the impulse to offer advice or diagnose. People go on all sorts of journeys towards recovery. Seeking practical advice can be a good next step, and professional support too. Keep asking. Keep asking, keep asking. 
We who have experienced trauma all repeat behaviors that we think are serving us well. And there are lots of reasons why, and yours will be different than mine. When you find yourself back in the same place that you were in before, give yourself an opportunity to understand what has happened to have led you there. Give yourself permission to tell your story in a new way and seek acceptance from those you love and from yourself. Reinvent yourself so that when you find an echo rumbling through your head in a shower before work and it reminds you of being a child and you're scared of everything, you have clarity on the past and the present and the future, let your recovery start and never end. It'll remind you where you came from. And it'll keep you focused. It'll show you how this journey started. There I was, at the top of a locked ward just down the road, staring down the barrel of the rest of my life or what was barely left of it. I'd been really lucky to survive again. And I have all of the scars and bruises to remind me. But something had changed. I now understand what it is to live as a person with trauma. I accept what has happened. And all of the choices I have made to attempt to heal and I realize that I was already in recovery and that this recovery is perfect. I can just be me.